We tried repeatedly to get an Israeli army spokesperson on the show to respond to Hamas, but they canceled the scheduled interviews. For more on the developments in Gaza, we are joined by Israel's former deputy foreign minister and a former foreign policy advisor to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Danny Ayalon. Danny Ayalon, thank you so much for joining me on Upfront. My pleasure. Danny, last Saturday, the 7th, Hamas launched a devastating attack. Uh, thousands of rockets were fired towards Israel, and hundreds of Hamas fighters crossed into the country. Uh, there are reports of horrific killings of Israeli civilians, a clear, clear violation of international law. Uh, in response, uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu threatened to turn the Gaza Strip into, quote, rubble, and the government announced a, quote, complete siege of the enclave. Since then, we've seen mass bombing in Gaza with reports that hundreds of civilians have been killed. Now, while the actions of Hamas are a clear, and I want to emphasize that, a clear violation of international law, isn't the collective punishment of all Gazans also, by definition, a war crime? Not really, because the situation is very clear. You know, as you mentioned, rightly so, Hamas uh, perpetrated a, um, an attack, which was a surprise attack. The IDF was caught un un uh, unprepared. And they got a major victory for the first 24 hours. But who was this victory against? Babies and children and whole families that were massacred in bed. The IDF was nowhere to be seen. When the IDF came back now, they pushed them back into the Gaza. Now, the problem with the Hamas is that they're committing a double um, war crime because they are targeting only civilians. And they're using their own civilians, the poor Palestinian of Gaza, as human shields. And what Israel did gave them a fair warning, and I think this is the only way to do with them, uh, is we told the, uh, the Gazan people to clear the area temporarily so we can go and take Hamas out. And then, of course, they can come back. So this, by definition, is not a war crime. We understand the plight of the Palestinians. They deserve their dignity and everything else. But nothing justifies butchering families. You know, this day, as you mentioned, 7th of October, was the day that more Jews were killed in 24 hours than any other day since the Holocaust. So you this, see... I mean, without, without, without question, respectfully, this, this is a devastating uh, moment, uh, an extraordinary act of violence that, that, again, is a violation of international law. But you said a couple of things that I, that I want to push you on. Uh, the idea of collective punishment is one of the things that we're talking about here. Uh, electricity has been cut, power has been cut, fuel has been cut. The, the Gazan people right now are being punished for the actions of Hamas. How is that not, by definition, collective punishment? Two, two things. Uh, uh, first of all, Hamas has turned Gaza into an enemy state. So there is no law, nothing in international law, that uh, 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 compels a country you are uh, in, uh, in a war with to supply them the, uh, the electricity. Now, what do they use the electricity as for? An, as, an, as, an for as, an, as an occupying power, international law does say that you have certain responsibilities by law. Uh, but, 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 before, but before we get there, even if we... We'll hold it for a moment, the power thing. Uh, there are residential buildings being hit. There are hospitals being hit. This is a densely populated area. The idea of being able to run away or to escape or go to a safe area seems impossible. Also, according to your own military uh, representatives, you've abandoned the idea of knocking on roofs, that is say, to say giving uh, a warning of dropping a non-explosive munition on buildings before people go. So people aren't getting a warning. They have nowhere to go. Residential buildings, schools, and hospitals are being hit. How is this not again, an act of collective punishment, and how is this not a target of civilian, unless, of course, you're regarding everybody in Gaza as an enemy combatant? Okay, well, I hear you. I hear you. But again, what we gave the population is a fair warning. What would you do? You know, what, what was, what was the, what, Is the fair warning... This, I just want to make sure we're on the same page here. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu told everyone to leave the area. Where were they to go? Okay. Very, very, I mean, this was, this is thought out. It's not something that we tell them, go, uh, go to the beaches, go drown yourselves, uh, God forbid, not at all. There is a huge expense, almost endless space in the Sinai Desert, just on the other side of Gaza. The idea is, and this is not the first time it will be done, the idea is for them to live over 
to the open areas where we and the international community will uh, prepare the infrastructure, you know, 10 cities with food and with water. You know what? Just like for the refugees of Syria that fled the butchering of uh, Assad a few years ago to Turkey. Turkey received 2 million of them. This is the idea. Now, Egypt will have to play ball here because once the, the population is out of sight, then we can go. You know what the palace, what the what Hamas did. It, you know we. When the pop, you said the population out of sight. Is that practically possible in such a densely populated area? And and, and forty. I mean, you have two million people in a densely populated enclave. Forty-seven percent of the inhabitants are children. Is it reasonable or plausible to to think that all those people are going to relocate to this ex excluded area and be safe from 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 a bombing attack? And again. The war we're saying there's warnings, but there are numerous reports on the ground that there are no warnings, that people are getting hit, that families have been killed from these attacks. I'll tell you in a practical manner what we should do and what we can do. Create, like in the past in history, a humanitarian corridor. When there is a humanitarian corridor, and we have been discussing this with the United States, uh, then we can guarantee in this corridor that nobody will get hurt. Now, again, I say... There is a way to receive them all on the other side for temporary time on, on Sinai. Because what did Hamas turn out? On the other Gaza? side, are we Gaza talking about Rafa? Are you, are you saying the, the other side that go to Egypt? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And Egypt will have to play ball because this is human life is at stake. If you're <laughs> sorry, talking as you human life is at stake because you're cutting off power, you're, you're shutting down hospitals, you're bombing residential buildings. I mean, right now, there is a hospital that has not, does not have sufficient power. There is a hospital where people are literally going to die. And, and, and Israeli's energy uh, minister, uh, Israel Katz, said, no electrical switch will be turned on, no hydrant will be opened, no fuel truck will enter until the Israeli abductees are returned home. Now, the ICRC spokesperson, Hisham Mahana, said that by cutting that power, hospitals are going to turn into graveyards. This is not an ideologue. This is the International Committee of the Red Cross. They're saying that because of your country's actions, not the actions of Hamas, not the actions of Egypt, but because of Israel's actions, the hospitals are going to turn into graveyards. How is that not a war crime? How is that defensible by any standard? First of all, the war crime, if anything, is Hamas. They are the ones, and I know exactly what you're talking about. Hamas does not allow, sometimes when they can, they keep those uh, civilians captive. They don't allow them to run away because this is what they want. Now, I know the area, and I'm, I suppose you're talking about the main hospital, which is the Shifa Hospital. Yep. The Shifa Hospital has been turned into a Hamas bunker. If Hamas wants to save them, they should just leave their arms, come out, and nothing will happen. But as long as they keep the Shifa Hospital, just like... Uh, schools and kindergartens as bunkers, and they fight out from there, there is no law, there is no law in this universe that protects them. And this is what we're doing, and this is why so, the world so is, is, there, is, there, is there Are there any independent reports, are there any intelligence reports that show that the Shifa hospital is, a, is, is, a Hamas, is primarily a Hamas bunker and not an actual medical site? Yes, and you know what? Where? You know what? Who? I, Where? And, and mark my words, and, and you can show it again because I know it's, uh, it's recorded. When this war is over and we will bring in the international press to Shifa and to all the bunkers, the underground tunnels that Hamas has created in Gaza, ask intelligence services of every country in the world, they know it. But anyway, what I'm saying is... No, 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 no just to be clear for the audience's benefit, no intelligence services has claimed that. Not one government has claimed that the Shifa hospital is a, is a Hamas bunker. That is your claim, and I want to make, be very clear that that is your claim. And you're saying you don't have any reports, but that I should just trust you. No. Mark your well, words. No. Trust you. And later on, it'll prove, be proven true. I'm telling you, everybody will see... Okay. After the war is... Fair enough. I have, to, I, have, I have to move on just in the interest of time. But, but I want to I continue on this same vein because the Secretary General of the UN, Antonio Guterres, said that he was deeply distressed by Israel's, Israel's announcement of a siege on the Gaza Strip. He said that the humanitarian situation, quote, will only deteriorate exponentially and that crucial life-saving supplies, including fuel, food, and water, must be allowed into Gaza. So the UN is saying you must do this. You are saying you're not going to do this. Um, how do you... No, we're not, we're not saying that. He's saying, do it, yeah, he's saying, saying doing it immediately. 
What I'm saying is what, you, what you're doing. No, no. He's saying doing it, doing, okay. doing it immediately. I, yeah. I got you. I'll tell you exactly what we're saying. I'm saying we will do everything for the Gazan people. Once and now, we demand immediate surrender, unconditional surrender of Hamas. If Hamas people come out with their hands up and clear their weapons, believe me, everything will be restored to Gaza. It is Hamas in Hamas hands. That, okay, if now I understand. Care... That, thank you for clarifying that, sir. I, I, think, I, think, I think we're actually on the same page here. You're saying that once Hamas leaves, you'll, you'll grant the, the, the Gazan people food, shelter, fuel, electricity, hospitals, schooling. And, in, and if they don't, and, and if Hamas doesn't leave, then they'll continue to starve and die in hospitals. You are defining for the international community right now collective punishment. You're saying until, until Hamas acts differently, the two million people in Gaza are going to be treated this way. And once Hamas acts differently, these two million people in Gaza will be treated better. That is exactly what collective punishment is. You're holding them accountable for the actions of others. That is the definition, the textbook definition of, of, of collective punishment, sir. Now, you may, you, you may accept that that's what you want to do, but this is absolutely a contravention of international law. Well, I'll tell you exactly. No, had we had no, if we had we pushed them into the wall, we're not pushing them to the wall. We want to open a humanitarian corridor so they can leave. But if Hamas, so that who can Hamas, leave? So that who can leave? Citizens. You're saying civilians can leave, but only through the Rafah border, correct? At this point, yes. So they can't because come. Where else? Your country. <laughs> they can come into Israel. I'm telling you one more thing I want to say. Uh, no, no, but I, want you to, I want you to address that point. Don't just smile, sir, respectfully. You're saying they, they, you're, not, you're making a corridor. They can, go to, they can go to Egypt. You're bombing them. You say you want to save them, but you, they can't come in. I, first of all, I'm not smiling. I'm crying in my heart. I'm crying in my heart for all the butchery of thousands of Israelis. Why do you think the world is with us? Why do you think the world is wise? All the international media was there. So don't talk to me about collective punishment. Don't talk to me about humanitarian. These are new rules of the game. There is no coexistence with Hamas, which is worse than ISIS, and we will not stop. We are uh, allowing the population to leave. But if Hamas will surrender, there won't be any problem whatsoever. Danny Ayalon, thank you so much for joining me on Upfront. Pleasure.